There we go. And I'd like to welcome you all to the ninth uh, meeting uh, since the pandemic started. We've been doing these every two weeks since uh, March, um, I want to say May. Yeah, about May. Um, and you're you know, you're seeing me. I'm coming to you live from a bungalow in the in the uh, ocean, or at least pretending to be. And I'm sporting my seven month old <laughs> beard, so I haven't shaved since the um, since it started because I said, hey, I'll just not shave for like a couple weeks, and a couple weeks went on and on and on. So, so here we are. Um, uh, so this is our uh, ninth meeting. So you know, it's really it's real, it's raw, relevant, and it's what the teachers talk about. La the last one we had two weeks ago, um, we were talking for um, two hours, uh, and there was a lot of participants. Lot of participants. So uh, this time around, we're probably not going to break an hour because uh, uh, it all depends on uh, who's here to share uh, what you've done. And I know that a lot of people were really busy with other meetings today because it's just right after uh, fall break. Um, so a lot of things have kicked into play. Uh, so a little engagement here, uh, icebreaker question in the chat, like what and where you teach and what tools have helped you the most so far? Um, um, so um, I'm going to be turning this screen sharing off. So we're going to be going into gallery view. So make sure to click on gallery view after I've stopped the screen sharing so you can see all of our smiling faces. Um, and if it's not too disruptive, you could keep your mic open uh, as we're having discussions. Um, type your questions in chat or you can raise your hands uh, to uh, participate. Um, um, some teachers have asked for a certificate of participation. So uh, if you need some continuing hours, uh, we could definitely provide you one. Uh, and no requests for demos of KP Compass. Uh, just a lot of you know that um, we do a KP thing. Uh, so basically, you know, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, so here's a recap of all the different things we talked about. And, uh, there, and I'm going to post a link to um, the record the where we can find all the resources and recordings of uh, of what teachers have shared in the past uh, few months. Uh, it's basically uh, on one blog post document, and I keep updating it as we uh, have these meetings. Um, but yeah, you know, we did we did a lot of talking of before school started preparation. And then now after school part started and uh, and dealing with all these different new restrictions. So um, so let, so basically, you know, I just want to uh, bring it up to the gallery here. I'm going to turn screen sharing off now. And I uh, also want to uh, thank those who are watching this uh, video as well. Um, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, <laughs> do all that fun YouTube stuff that we all probably hear way too often. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's uh, bring it out to the floor. So I uh, really like your poke Pokemon hat there, Scott. <laughs> yeah, good. I still play Pokemon Go. <laughs> um, in any case, so I know Michelle's here to, to garner ideas. And, and I think you had one, you have somebody at uh, our last meeting from there, right? Yeah. Now she asked some really good questions, uh, although one of the questions we really didn't have, no one had an answer for, which was how, how, how do you deal with sending, sending food home, you know, to the kids who, you know, because of equity issues. Uh, still, really, that's, a, that's still a uh, growing issue um, as people are get, getting back into lockdown and uh, the fall is coming right around the corner. So, uh, so the cases are going to still start going up as, uh, and nationwide, it's actually gone uh, gone up quite a bit. So, um, so anybody here like like to share anything that they've done uh, that's been successful or useful, uh, or any any unusual challenges that you like to like um, post to the group? And since I, since I've been doing this for like uh, this is the ninth one, I actually have uh, some answers from other meetings that uh, that have been really useful. So uh, if uh, so, here we go. Anybody? Anybody? No challenges. Everything's perfect. <laughs> Go ahead, Scott. So we just switched terms. So we switched to a four by four block with the the distance learning. And so today is day three with all brand new students. And I was just shocked at I finished eight weeks 
I would ask them to do something. They would pop into their groups. They would comply. They would give me stuff back. And it was just like crickets. So it's like the amount of energy going back out and starting over. Like I knew that I had come far with that group, but it just shocked me. I wasn't really prepared for it when I started on Monday and I would like ask a question. I was like, feel like I was doing a seance. I'm like, oh, sorry, give me, give me a sign. Like it, it was rough. This yeah. just so, being so aware and patient with myself of how far we have to go. So are, are you like uh, dealing with, uh, so you're going, you went to just hybrid or full, full remote? Uh, is that what you uh, So I'm in Sacramento. We were a hotspot for the state. So we oh. uh, are in distance learning full time and we'll probably be through January um, uh -huh. would be the soonest we'll be back. Yeah. So that's, that's really tough. So you had them in person and then you had to go remote. So, so you, so you see a, a drain of the energy. Uh, especially with engagement, so and so yeah, that, that's 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 going to be a, a pretty common story moving up here. And, and when you said you know, you're in a hotbed, uh, you, I assume that you're also pretty close to some of the fires that were happening down around Sacramento. Uh, yeah, it's finally cleared out. You can see blue sky again, but for almost a whole last month, it was just like gray, like fog. It was pretty rough. Yeah, same same in Oregon. So, I mean, so the, as far as engagement, uh, you know, using like uh, online tools like Edpuzzle and, uh, and um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of some other ones that are off the top of my head, but we have a document of, uh, of, of teachers con contributed ideas that uh, you can find in the link that I shared, which, uh, which is basically a, a living document of, you know, things that teachers have done. And in it, there's a lot of like, cool ideas that they've done to uh, run through like different things like, you know, community engagement, keeping kids engaged uh, remotely, um, different things that you could do, um, you know, as far as like cooking uh, at home uh, and also like the different tools that teachers are using, uh, like Edpuzzle is one of them. You know, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of them out there that are very useful. So, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty harsh uh, here, Scott. Um, and uh, I know that in Oregon, you guys had a lot of smoke as well <laughs> for a while. Uh, so I'm glad to, that those are under control now um, and everything like that. Okay. So uh, um, what you making? <laughs> are you cooking dinner right now? Well, actually, no, it's, it's early. It's only 3 o'clock there, uh, Scott. <laughs> Uh, my wife is also a teacher, so she has a uh, staff meeting till five o'clock. So oh. I'm uh, get slowly prepping, cleaning up the lunch mess because we fed three kids. We have three kids. Lunch is always we get them food and then they just feed themselves. So I'm cleaning up their mess and then getting <laughs> set for dinner. Yeah, it's uh, nonstop. It seems like, uh, and you have to teach remotely now, which is another big pain. Uh, so, uh, anybody else have any any uh, stories that they could like that to share, or any challenges that uh, they want to, some ideas from? Hello, Selena. Good seeing you. Hi. Uh, good evening. Um, we were virtual, and uh, starting November the fifth, we will be uh, face to face with two cohorts: Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're still remote, and Thursday, Friday will be the second cohort. So the idea that um, we're playing around with is that um, the two days we see them in, in face to face, we will put them directly into the lab and the other two days, which they are um, away from us, we will give them the KP Compass modules uh, coordinating with the uh, uh, foundation's book. Um, and I've kind of waited to do that because uh, I think that they need a little bit more of instruction um, using the technology. And so I think that's the idea. And I think I have it set up correctly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jeff gave me some suggestions, but uh, I think that's the way we're going to uh, proceed. Um, and we're going to keep our fingers crossed. There are some students who really just don't want to come back face to face. So we have to look at that and give uh, for at least this first semester, uh, we still will have to give them remote assignments. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess that's good news for us. 
Yeah. So so you went, you started remote, then you went back to. No, like, then we're going to face to face November the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you still have a, a couple of weeks. So you're still remote right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And how how's the uh, challenge of engagement have been? Like you've been in session for about over a month now, have, haven't you? Yeah, we have uh, 45 minutes virtual uh, each uh, four days a week. And attendance has been very, very good. Uh, and it's throughout our entire building, we're finding out a little hard to get the homework back. But you know, Just because so, they don't want to um, submit it. <laughs> They're submitting it late. I don't, you know, that's, yeah. but that's a problem, not just with our class. They said it's a, a, a building problem. So uh, yeah. hopefully when they're seeing us face to face, maybe we can get a handle on that. So that's where I'm hoping the KP Compass piece will come in and help with that. Yeah, uh, that, that'll help a lot. And especially the face to face part uh, is I know uh, in Ohio, they went back uh, now they might go back remote again, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just hard to teach. Um, remotely online in general um, sure um, so especially with engagement so actually you know so like actually I, I like one of the suggestions that a teacher made like about a month and a half ago i would say is that they actually downloaded a, a plug-in on their browser so as they're sharing the screen you can they change the cursor to something uh, something else like something whimsical um, so uh, so you know little things like that um you know, carries a lot of miles. So, you know, you change your cursor to a chef's hat or what, what I like is mm, like, okay. like in Zoom, like I like these virtual backgrounds. So, you know, change it up a little bit. Um, and they have a lot of cool, like little um, plugins. So I can pretend I'm a French. Yeah, uh, we, we do the polls. Um, you know, we try to get creative. We let the students present projects. So, um, you know, we're finding ways to keep them engaged though. So. We yeah. had a, a um, our st our uh, cluster meeting was last week, and so these are some of the uh, you know best practices that uh, we were coming up with uh, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the district. We're having some of these same challenges. So yeah, uh, so that's good. Uh, a lot of those best practices uh, we, we all need to share that. So because uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So sure, let me get myself uh, red lipstick. There we go. I got myself red lipstick now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I gotta give myself a beard. I'm not that I really need one. to do this one. How about that? There. Now I've got a fuller beard and I could give myself um, eyebrows. More eyebrows. <laughs> anyway, just like little things like you know, the the plug in to change the cursor. Um, let me take this lipstick off. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, and you know, uh, just to make those meeting virtual meetings a little bit more dynamic i guess uh, it's yep. cheesy but hey <laughs> you know we're all we're all trying to mickey mouse it through all this sure um yeah you guys use uh zoom or google hangouts uh zoom zoom okay yeah so which is my preferred uh, conferencing tool because well i'll just give you my opinion uh google is a great uh they're, they're they have a great um uh, uh, system, but the problem is that they're using they use the web browser. So when you're using Hangouts or Meet or anything like that, it's draining on the web browser. So it's not software driven; it's web driven. So so that slows everything down. Whereas Zoom is a separate application, with, so they could tap into resources uh, and not bog down the entire uh, browser experience. So um, and they got these yeah. cool things. <laughs> and across twice a week, we try to do uh, live videos in our in our kitchen. I I think the kids really like that. I think that really is the uh, key piece that they see us um, demonstrating something in our space where they're coming back to. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, keep that relationship going, you know. Um, and and you started all remote, right? So you never had you never yes. got face face. Yes, so. uh, we gave out the culinary remote kits, and so we got to meet our students outside of our building um, at the entrance. And we got to meet some of their parents. So that was really kind of novel. So at least we got to really put a name with the face yeah. uh, because they really look different in person than they do on the Zoom uh, square. So that so was that, really. So can you elaborate more on that? Because that was a question posed uh, during the meeting two weeks ago from someone in, in Salem, uh, Michelle's co cohort uh, here. And no one really could answer that question about because no one was doing remote kits. Some were doing partial remote kits. The others were doing like you know, uh, like a library sign out. So if they need a piece of equipment, they sign it out. 
Uh, so how did you take uh, handle the the distribution of food uh, and ingredients to support distance learning? Uh, what we simply did was we said uh, we gave two days where you can pick up your culinary remote kit that had measuring spoons. Uh, everything was brand new in it. Uh, recipes, pro start recipes, um, and and a lot of documents, uh, recipe documents and things like that, um, measuring uh, devices and so that uh, when we would do a lesson, they could, uh, we did a measuring lesson, they could use the equipment that they had. But I think the engagement was that you gave them something. Yeah. And so um, I think the parents really liked that. And I think, I, I believe that if a kid thought, well, maybe this is not for me, uh, getting that remote kit really kind of brought them in because we refer back to it. And then we give out a recipe that we, we use the same equipment when we're making a recipe. And so we send out the recipes to the students. Um, Something else we kind of did, um, we have food items available also. Uh, if they need to pick up, you know, uh, we can, we're not doing anything with knives right now. I'm waiting uh, till face to face, but uh, we make food items available so they can pick those up if they would like to work with us on the, uh, the recipes that we give, give out weekly. So I think that has been kind of key uh, to keeping them engaged too. Okay, cool. So, uh, um... Uh, Debbie uh, from like four, five, six weeks ago shared a uh, what she did. Oh, speaking of the devil, yeah, uh, see her. Debbie, coming Debbie just appeared in the room. Appeared. Well, she hasn't connected yet, but, but I was just hey, Debbie. I was just talking about you <laughs> right when you appeared in the room. Um, oh, my ears must be burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All yeah. these ideas have come from this uh, from this group. So we're just yeah. putting them into. Yeah, and, and and like to definitely like seeing the how uh, you know putting into action. But I was just mentioning about uh, Debbie, your solution with uh, with uh, featuring knife cuts uh, by using uh, plastic knives, like the mm -hmm. you know, um, and also Lettuce knife. and using um, play doh. What, what was that substance called again? It wasn't play doh. It's just it's a knife cut dough. You just make it, but it's like play doh. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you, um, I will say, I think I, I posted uh, Teachers Pay Teacher, uh, Jean Torres. She has the knife cut uh, mat and the dough, the recipe for the dough. And mm -hmm. it's just so great. And I just laminate the mat and then I mm -hmm. use it for my regular knife cuts, not just the dough. Right. right. But we usually practice with the dough. And then after we got finished practicing in class, um, I sent it, I sent the sent it home with their new plastic knives. So they got to practice at home as yeah. well. And that that uh the stuff that you purchase is, is in, in a link in the document that I sent, uh, that I posted in yeah. chat. I'll post it again because I, you know, we had a few people join after, uh, after I posted it. No, so, so, uh, um, so how's the results been with the, with using those kits for practicing knife skills? I, I know it's not probably not as effective, but, um, so what, what, what's your, uh, experience with it so far? Well, my kids, um, they seem to be cooking a little more at home than normal because they just don't have equipment at home. And um, for the la last week, we did knife cuts, you know, in class for the two days that they were there. And they, they have really improved since, you know, we started on them. Um, so I've had good experience with it. And I think it was... I think it was the ownership of them having something to be able to take home. You know, my kids are poverty level kids. So that was like a Christmas gift to them. Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of us that are in the same situation, Title I uh, students. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I remember, you know, you were in the process of using it last time we talked. Uh, but now that you've experienced with it, uh, that's that's uh, good to hear that uh, you're still getting good effect or good results from the, the dough thing. We just call it the dough thing. I don't know. The dough thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Because uh, it's not Play-Doh, but it's something, some sort of dough. 
We'll call, we'll call it knife yeah. cut dough. How about that? Just call it knife cut dough, but basically it's homemade Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah. And how long does it last? Uh, for a while or does it? Uh... Um, I got about two weeks, about two and a half weeks out of it. It depends on how hot, how hot and moist it is. Cause you know, it'll, it'll start getting sticky and funky and you have to add a little flour to it, but I can usually get two good weeks out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> so the reusability is pretty high. You just like mash it together and do more cuts and yep. then mash it together. Yeah. And more cuts. Um, very cool. No, that, that's uh, definitely a good thing. Glad to hear that you had good results and results. Now, now Selene, I actually had a question for you. Um, how did you get over the, 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 I mean, everyone's scared about liability with since cooking at home. So how did you approach that, um, that taboo? Uh, uh, thought? We, we told them we would accept no uh, liability uh, with knives and the recipes and the things we're doing mostly were baking um, and we said, even if you're an advanced student, a second year student, you are probably doing some meal preparation anyway through the summer, through, um, uh, you're doing meal preparation with whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner at your home anyway. And so we just asked the parents that they incorporate uh, some of those fundamental skills um, at home and then the students can get credit for that. So if they take a picture, they send it in, um, they get credit for that cooking assignment. And so whether um, if they're doing mincing garlic at home or if they're um, making a meatloaf or they're making muffins that are a part of, uh, we did um, uh, apple pie and uh, we supplied the apples and um, they made the dough over two days. We made the dough one day, we made the pie dough the next day. And then we asked them to put it in the freezer. But of course, we don't think they did. We think they went ahead and baked it. And we said it will be part of your uh, Saturday or Sunday meal preparation. So um, and the students were making pies for three, four days after that. So based off the recipe and based off doing that live demo. So that's how we got around that. Uh, trying not to use a whole bunch of knife skills right now. We're just studying about knives and the anatomy of the knife and knife cut dimensions. Uh, before, uh, you know, we're really waiting that the, th uh, the last week of this month is when we will do the knife demonstrations again. And then that'll be the first week that we see them and they'll go right into knife work from there. So hoping that's all going to work out like that. Yeah, no, that, that's good. So did you have any like parent pushback at all or were they all pretty? None. No, the parents were very supportive because it's if the parents are home with them, the parents didn't have to make the meal. So they were kind of like supervising <laughs> and encouraging. So that yeah, was really a, a positive thing on uh, for us. Yeah, I know a lot of schools are, are, are just like very um, skittish about cooking at home, you know, and, but like realistically, uh, are they going to burn their house down? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you have to do a lot of things wrong to, to get to that point. <laughs> um, for our district, we what we have is we it's the same liability waiver that they use for sports. Um, just signing that they're choosing to participate and the school is not liable. So it's the exact same form. We have to have that with a wet signature from the parent, and then they need to have their food handler's card and the school as the teachers have to have to allow them to participate in a graded cooking assignment at home. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so that, that's a good point. Using the same waiver as the uh, mm -hmm. uh, as the sports, um, and the, but you're 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 that's that's what you're going to be doing uh, when you guys go to remote next week, or each, right? <laughs> so, through January. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of things are fluxing. So, so you know, Selena's going back to in person. You're Scott. You're going to remote. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I think Debbie, you're 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 still in person, so you don't you don't see any like lock, uh, lockdowns in the future, do you? Oh no, we're we're blended, so we're seeing we're virtual one day a week, and then half my class gets to come to class two days a week, and the other half the other two days. But um, numbers are really going up here, so we're kind of holding our breath that any day. 
because if we get into the red zone, I think they'll automatically put us back to virtual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but right now we're doing well. So, things you know, where I'm just holding my breath. Yeah, things are on the rise. Uh, definitely. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we are in Michigan and our numbers are ticking upward, but our uh, you know, this was two weeks ago that it was released that we will be going for a uh, second quarter. We will be going back to the hybrid model and not the, and we will not be doing hybrid and virtual. We just will be doing uh, the cohort Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So we're keeping our fingers crossed too. So, and again, there's been a few kids, um, more than a few who said they would prefer not to come back face to face. So we have to deal with that issue also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We the hardest thing for me has been that we have this virtual Monday. So on Mondays, the whole class has to be online for, and they have to be online for every class they have in the school day on Monday. And it's been hard to get kids to, you know, come to that online class. So I did try something new with my knife skills. I actually gave the test using the private chat on zoom oh cool okay because uh i would throw something up i would throw a question up on my screen and then they would have like a part you know i would throw different knives up and they would have to name them and they would have to privately send me their answer and if they didn't do it within like so many seconds i counted it wrong huh. so that That's they didn't have time to look it up on their phone or you know confer with their neighbor and it worked out pretty well yeah that's definitely a, a creative way to to foster any, uh, engagement uh by by throwing those pop quizzes in uh, uh into your meetings so good idea so i did something today i used the breakout rooms in zoom and uh since we're restarting, I went and actually taught a lesson on how to use the breakout room and the help button and all the features. But I do a parallel shared Google slide. So each group has a slide. So their, their group one is breakout group one. And so they were making a poster. We talked about what to wear to work and what not to wear. So they were doing a summary and making a poster. And so I'm just sitting watching the chat, but also watching so on their slide and those are the rooms that I can pop in on and so it's just another way of monitoring what's going on and sure enough like when I popped in there's like one person when we're on the rest are all sitting there with their camera off so just another thing that I did as well yeah good idea I think I got most of it uh, uh, there it appears that your internet uh, is a little spotty there <laughs> uh, you're cracking in and out a little bit. So thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good idea. Um, and uh, yeah, we gotta come up with more creative ideas to foster engagement and accountability, uh, which is key, especially when you're going remote. Uh, and, and Selena, you've had a lot of experience with that so far because you've been remote the whole time. Uh, anybody else from the gallery like to share what they've done? We got um, quite a few of you. Uh, who are, have, do not have the cameras on. Uh, um, and, I, and in the beginning, I shared, uh, you know, please turn on your camera so you can see your smiling faces. Uh, hello, Leslie. Good seeing you again. Um, yeah, things are going up in Georgia there, right? I just listened for my name. <laughs> yeah. I just, um, yeah, because we were supposed to go back on Monday, but it went from 93 to 103, so we're not going back. Um, oh, wow. And, and, and that's it. The numbers confuse me, and I, all I need to know is how to, if, I can, if we can cook and clean outside. <laughs> um, I'm very serious about that. Um, and today in our faculty meeting, we did, you know, teachers got to... And I'll share the article, that's what I was about to do, that um, that we read and talked about. But we talked about, you know, teachers using their voices, using their words, taking care of us first, reentry plans, um, protocols, all the what ifs. And I mainly brought up just the use of language like traditional, ain't no traditional. <laughs> uh, back to normacy, that does not exist anymore. It's it's a wrap it's like if you went back to the future and left a cell phone it's not 
<laughs> and then you come to the present. That, so we talked about we talked about some of that stuff today. So I'm glad we're not going back. My kids, um, like one teacher just mentioned in Detroit, Miss Celine, my um, the student was like, "We going back on the 19th?" I said, "Y'all better breathe." I said, "No," because they're even confused and a lot of because of my population of babies a lot of my babies are high risk uh -huh. and are being raised by grandparents and because stuff is switched around that the the big kids are tending to you know younger siblings uh -huh. and even if i were to go back i have an eight-year-old who needs he's smart but he's all in the rafters you know <laughs> just that um keep them grounded so we had a town hall meeting so a lot of those questions came up and I told my principal I don't want to be thanked anymore for all my hard work stop thanking me <laughs> let's come up with some some um let's talk let's get more solution based so our district is slowly starting starting to move that way so but like I need a zoom parent like you have a room parent like I need a zoom parent <laughs> um I asked the principal, would it, would it be crazy if schools just, just read, just throw it out the window and do like college, let the kids pick the times that fit their lifestyle. Yeah. So, you know, that's where I'm at with it. Of, you know, pulling teeth, anxiety around losing students that don't need to be lost in the mix. Um, I bribe my kids to turn their cameras on um but it works i like bribery um, <laughs> what are you bribing with uh, well the first time we're map testing and cameras have to be on 100 points i said because because you, your grades are funky they a little stank and so every day when they if they turn their cameras on you know i'll show a little love here and there i'll be like it'll benefit you in the end and then that's how i keep up with kids being present you just can't you know and some kids are confused about what it looks like to be present you can't just log on that's not because we do Pear Deck, which is all interactive, interactive in live time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm doing my asynchronous thing for my second block and my, my CA2 kids don't talk. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm gonna treat y'all like a college class. Y'all got group projects, work it out. Y'all can do it, I believe in you. And you know, that's it. Yeah. And I bragged about all of y'all today in my staff meeting, I did. <laughs> I did. I break by each and every one of y'all. So. <laughs> the, the group, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the group's a good group. So uh, a lot of great, great ideas come from this, uh, like what uh, Celine said earlier. Um, and I, you know, I learned a lot of stuff too. But really, it's it's feeling like not feeling like you're alone. I mean, that's probably the the biggest thing that we get out of this is is sharing ideas and and knowing that. Other people are, are all in the same boat, and we're all trying to trying to steer the ship together, <laughs> um, as creaky as it is. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, the numbers are going up all over the country. So, um, yeah. oh, real quick before I jump off, because of course this is Wednesday, my day of a thousand meetings. I shared <laughs> an article about um, positive tox tox toxic positivity. Toxic positivity. I see. Thanks for sharing that. Um, oh, it's a really good article. Um, I shared it to all my admin. Someone shared it to all the teachers in the school. But it um, it says some of the stuff that I think teachers are feeling and need to hear. So it's a good read. It's a good piece of therapy. Oh, cool. Yeah. But I just jumped in to say hello. I haven't been participating. I've been busy. Yeah, I know. I hope everyone is well and using their words. And taking care of themselves and doing the things. Thanks for uh, for sharing that link and 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 yeah and and being here to share your positivity uh, to to the group. And uh, I know you're busy, so I appreciate. Indeed, that. you're welcome, Debbie. Yes, yes, sir. So I'm about to get ready for my next meeting. But y'all have a good evening, and I'll see y'all in two weeks. Yeah, see you in two weeks. All uh, right. Yeah. So thanks, Leslie, Please, for for, uh, for being here. Um, Anybody else like to share something the, the, that they've uh, used or uh, has worked well for yourself or your students? I mean, it doesn't have to be just for your students. Like, so that article looks hey, like it's- um, Veronica Campbell here from Clintonville area. Um, well, I'll talk, about the, I'll talk about the negative first because I like to end on the positive. Which so, state are you in? Wisconsin. Wisconsin, okay. So I'm between uh, 
Wapaka County and Shano, and both of them have really high incidence of COVID right now. Yesterday, uh, Wisconsin hit another record, 3,200 positive COVID cases in one day. And we were doing the blended learning, which I really liked. And our board was going to vote to go to four days a week, and we asked them to stay um, with the blended learning. But in the end, we had to close because we've ended up with, uh, I think, 12 cases at our high school and our high school is not that big just within a month. Wow. But they're still making the teachers come every day, which to me doesn't make any sense. You would think you could teach uh, virtually from home. So unless you're on the quarantine list, uh, you teach from school. So if you're on the quarantine list and you don't hide your background, the kids can figure out that you're on the quarantine list because they can see your house. <laughs> so I guess some people need to learn how to do the backgrounds <laughs> that you were talking about putting in different backgrounds and things. But the positive thing I did was um, I had heard about it before, but I'm just kind of not you know, I think it's my generation or my age. I'm not that jump into a new technology stuff. And I was glad that I joined this group this summer. And so someone had mentioned the ad puzzle and you can make your own movie or you can find a YouTube movie um, and then you can add your own questions to it and you can have the kids do it for fun or you can grade it and you can have it set so that the movie has to stop they can't go forward until they write something so at least they have to respond to the questions so they can't do the movie in two seconds because they actually have to watch it for it to go forward which is good because i've seen them say okay i watched the movie and then they don't know anything about it and um let me see what else did i want to say about it cool. i guess that was all i just found that ed puzzle was a very useful tool this week for me so and like one of the other ladies was saying, when I'm in school, I'm making mini movies. And I liked uh, someone's suggestion about using the same form that the sports are using because right now uh, and last spring, my kids were cooking at home with no, like no disclaimer whatsoever because we went home and they were cooking in class and um, whatever recipe we gave them or if we didn't give them a recipe, we told them to make a family meal because uh, you know, with the economically disadvantaged, we wanted them to use things they have on hand. And at first, my principal said we were going to send home food because I've already got like pasta and all kinds of things bought. And then she changed her mind and decided we weren't going to send home food. So it's been very confusing this year. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, flip flops uh, definitely do not help uh, <laughs> with situations. <laughs> right. Are we sending home food? Yes, we are. And I already had sent home food to a girl who was going to do 100% virtual all year. And then they're like, oh, well, now if you send home food, you have to have like a store label. So you have to print something out um, and take a picture of it to prove that you had a label saying, don't keep the peaches longer than a week. And I'm like, there's not even labels on peaches at the store, you know? <laughs> So it was a little bit unrealistic, but I did it just so that I was covering myself. So, yeah, well, that's that's an interesting hoop to jump through. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought of that one? <laughs> it came from uh, our food service people actually have to do it because they're sending home lunches for the kids. Uh -huh. Oh, so yeah. Over summer, they tried to send only things that were not perishable or that were shelf stable. But this semester, they're sending home sandwiches and things. And I don't know if it was the lawyer or the state, but our food service director came down and told us, this is what you have to do if you're sending food home. So that was the directive that the whole district was being consistent. So if I sent home food, I was supposed to be sending home. Uh, so what I did was I tried to use products that I had a package with a label. So I would take the cheese and scan the cheese label or, or copy the cheese label so I could send it home with the cheese that I was sending. But I said, part of the problem is, is that the student needs to have enough food to measure um, or they're not showing their measuring skills. If you measure it all out and send it home and once it gets home, you can't guarantee that they refrigerate it or someone else in the family doesn't eat it. So there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of problems going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez, it just it keeps piling on and on and on. <laughs> so, so, you, so you're still doing you. So you're um, you're hybrid right now, right? Uh, um, 
for the next few weeks, we're going to be virtual and then we're hoping to go to the hybrid November 1st, depending on how our numbers go in with in a, we're actually looking at our school and our county versus the whole state. So, yeah. but, but we did have some big events in um, late August and early September that we think we're now seeing some of the side effects. Um, there were fairs, there were fall festivals, there were horse rides, all kinds of events that we normally have where people were very close together, sometimes under tents, but they really were not always outside. And there was no enforcement of wearing masks. So it, we just think the jump might be from part of those events that went on. Yeah, that definitely would cause uh, a surge, <laughs> um, things like that. So, uh, so since you're sending food home, you and Celine, uh, uh, how how's uh, this affected your food costs uh, as well? Is it gone up or gone down, or uh, since uh, so you, can, uh, you can answer that? Um, I can answer it from my view. Is that um, I had a lot of food bought from last semester. We didn't send any food home in the spring. So I have a lot of shelf stable items like cereals and pastas and marshmallows. So I don't have to spend those. But now our principal sent me an email and she said, okay, we are going to be uh, virtual for four full weeks. I need to know how much money you would have spent for those four weeks because I want the money back. We had um, 80 students, but our district is not very big. We were a small district. So we had 80 students who decided to transfer to either schools that were open all the time or to online schools. So we lost a big amount of money. So now she wants the money back and me to try to figure out how much I'm going to spend. And I said, I'd rather wait till later in the year because then you can see, um, you know, like if we go back in November or if we're here full time second semester, I'll need some of that money to purchase food. And if they change their mind and want me to send food home again in November, you know, it may cost more depending on what we need to buy. So, yeah, you can't buy in the quantities that you're used to. <laughs> right, right. And then also, I'm thinking if they're going to measure, say we're going to do baking. Each kid should probably have a 10 pound bag of flour, a five pound bag of sugar, you know, if we're going to send them food home, let's do one big event and send it home for the semester. And if we end up coming back sooner, they'd have stuff that they could practice with at home. And I know there is a place from, uh, I think it's King Arthur Flour that will give free flour to schools. And um, you can also apply for a beef grant um, from different areas. So if you look, sometimes you can find ways to help your budget, depending on some of the grants are national and some of them are statewide. <clears throat> That's great. Um, I know that those, uh, those um, organizations are out there to provide uh, relief and help like that. So, so, you know, definitely good to share th th those ideas out there for teachers who have not um, approached any organization. Is there any specific organization uh, that yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess uh, it's, it's more local than it is uh, national? Uh, I know the Beef Council, we have a lot of help from the Beef Council. So a lot of times those kind of councils are the, you know, if you have those pork council, those kind of within your state, you can go to, because I we've gotten money for the Beef Council three or four times and just a matter of calling them and telling them we needed it. And Veronica, don't forget to figure in when you're doing your budget, I, when we were sending all this food and stuff home, the packaging almost costs at times more than the food and stuff you're sending. And I really think that labeling issue is a labeling issue that's coming down the pike that, uh, cause I know I'm on the board of Meals on Wheels in my county and they, you know, so, you know, all this prepackaged food and cooked food and meals are being sent. And there's some new new federal labeling that's gonna be required that's coming down the pike. Cause they just had to buy a really expensive labeler to label everything they were sending home. So that may have something to do with that labeling issue you were talking about. 
<clears throat> so it sounds like it's more of a national thing than, uh, than local <laughs> uh, or even statewide. Yeah, I think it's been delayed because of the cost of it. I mean, the cost to, uh, you know, put labels on everything and print it out and all of that, even though it's computerized, is like thousands of dollars. And when you're talking small businesses, you know, that would have to label like that. Yeah. So, but I think it is coming. And time consuming. <laughs> Yeah, so Celine, you had something to say about the, your, your costs? Well, I did something kind of creative uh, for two weeks. And uh, we kind of partnered with the United States Department of Agriculture Farm to Families, and they were giving out food boxes. And I made it a virtual field trip or a field experience where the students can go down to the Eastern Market and I, I did the mass email to the students and the parents. Parents thanked me. And they were giving away food boxes that contained apples, some type of squash. So for three weeks, we had spaghetti squash. We had acorn squash. We had butternut squash. But they also had pro, uh, dairy in it. So, um, you know, it was cottage cheese, uh, chobani yogurt, um, sour cream, milk. And so what I would do is when we would get the boxes and, and, and several of the students went down and got them. And that's how we did the apple pie project because we knew everybody had apples and that we supplied apples to those people who needed it. But for instance, I said, this is like our mystery box. What recipes can we make using the items before us? So again, one of the greatest recipes that came out of it was one cup of self-rising flour and one cup of um, Greek yogurt makes pizza dough. And so the kids absolutely love that. We did that as a demonstration. I said, look, I have to go and find recipes to use all of these items up. I did a squash day where I said, this is the reason why people are not taking the squashes because they're so difficult to cut and we don't want you to cut them. Um, but I think what we're, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to make recipes in class that we can share with the uh, USDA with these food boxes because when you get these food items, some things are very easy to make a recipe with, but some people may not understand what Greek yogurt is for. Or we know you can make a parfait, but we were trying to get different recipes and then we wanna add those as a community service project to the USDA. So the students were excited about that. The parents were excited about it. So that's what we did that for two weeks and that worked out fairly well. That's really cool. Yeah, and, and definitely anything to drive excitement uh, and parental involvement. Uh, and, and it was uh, so that the squash thing was just like it just happened to be available. So you just kind of adapted your lesson to what was being exactly. Done. You know, it's this time of the year. It's pumpkin. Uh, here are the pumpkin seeds. And yes, you guys, can, if you were here, you would be roasting them. So again, uh, they learned a little bit more about the types of squash. And then, of course, we made zucchini bread. Um, those are some of the recipes that we use. But it was really kind of cool because the kids actually had that product in their home at that point. So yeah, it worked out fairly well. So I have to come up with some other things now as, as you know, the gear now is that once we release that we are going back hybrid or going face to face, then um, a little bit more interest and, you know, making sure that the work is done so that when they can get into the lab, because that's what every student wants to do. So yeah, exactly. have a new driving force right now. That's great. Um, so you, so basically you, you had to adjust your lesson plans to whatever sure. available. So you might not have covered this until next spring. <laughs> normally. Exactly. And of course, we've got um, some virtual field trips. We have a, a state fair virtual field trip this Friday. So again, we're just trying to be real creative and and how we're presenting and, and you know just thinking outside of the box like everybody else, but getting a lot of good ideas from this group though. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing too. And and Veronica wrote in chat that uh, her county was doing that in the summer months, but uh, it, it's over now. So I guess uh, they stopped it. <laughs> so I guess it all depends on where you're at. Um, sure. Um, but there's always there's always opportunity wherever you are. So uh, yeah, thanks for sh sharing that, Celine. Uh, definitely gives no us some, some good ideas and and what how to adapt. <clears throat> Great. Um, so anybody else uh, from the gallery have a uh, um, have a story or from something that they've done that's worked uh, challenges. 
but we definitely covered the topic of like you know sending food home which was one of the big question last meeting that nobody had a real good answer at the time so, but now you know we've got people who've been doing it uh so uh those are some good great ideas on how to provide food and ingredients and things like that so i can share a little bit and i how yeah. are you good yourself it's Woody. I'm up in Vermont. I'm very spoiled, as I've always, as I've always said. We yeah, are. Numbers always still down, right? Yeah, they're really still down. There's, there's really a, a lot of cooperation. Um, with our governor has done a fantastic job, and and uh, we are our school district. Our our school. We have a standalone school district. The Patricia A. Hannaford Career Center is its own school district. So we have, while everybody else around us is is doing the two days, uh, they split the alphabet and they do two days on Monday and Tuesday and then three days off and the other half come on Thursday and Friday and have the other side off. <clears throat> Our students have been given the option to come four days in person and today is our remote day and they clean the whole building. And, and so we're in person four days a week and uh, and I have really, the, the KP program has allowed me to, um, you know, really empower students to do the academics for homework and on Wednesdays. So that when we get on the ground together, we can be uh, improvising and, you know, I basically flipped the, I flipped it so that I have, I had three returning students who really missed out on last spring and they really wanted to be in person and they came back and they, 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 we went through this KP in the spring with them. And now they're, you know, I'm, I'm taking a back seat. I am, you know, I'm 67 years old. These kids, they're saying, chef, let's do a, you know, let's do a, a Snapchat or let's do a, 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 a Talk you know, uh, uh, whatever, whatever program it is that's going to, that they're going to sell us out in a minute. So, so we met this morning and this was really inspiring to me is, is we, I'm used to, I'm, re, I'm used to, you know, having a restaurant, having a dining room, having a kitchen organized, you know, three teams, having a, a, a customer service team, having a cook's team, having a, a bakes team and having people work together and having creating urgency and really trying to mimic the workplace. And now it's like, that's not, that's not possible because there's no in-person uh, dining. And what's, what's great is um, we got a, we got a, uh, we got a square. I've never taken credit cards. I've always just been a cash business. So we've got a square and we've developed it. We've got a kid who's developed a website and we've seen some models from other restaurants that are successful across, um, across our state who have totally reorganized themselves and, um, and they use the square as well. And I, there's this business that used to be seven days a week, three meals a day, and now they have there are four days, which this is the model I'm looking for, is something that can be four days on and, and three days off. They are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. So think of a restaurant with Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. They open from 12 to 6 p.m. They have a market. They, they're developing products and, and selling, uh, selling products out of their of their of their kitchen and they organize meals that people can buy and 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 take home for their families at night and so i'm just sort of looking at that saying okay so show me how, how is this going to work and i think it's really again very spoiled that we have um that i have the resources i have and the numbers that i have i have you know i have 10 students and um and they're all day so four days in person all day. It's just we can do we can do some damage. It's really it's really good, but we can't do what we've always done, and that's out of my comfort zone. And um, you know I don't know if that helps anybody on on this call. We are unique up here. I, I just remember that there's one one of the things that's really worked for me is because I still we still can't be 
I can't be doing demonstrations with students that gathered around me. So what I have gotten is I've gotten this, um, our IT guy got me an iPad with, uh, with an, I call it my iPad IV. So it's like, you know how you can walk around with your IV when you're in the hospital. And so I've got an iPad that I walk around with and I set it up for myself and I, I, I can focus it on my hands and I can do a demonstration and my students can be in the dining room and up on the screen, my hands are going and my voice is being heard and they can just be socially distanced. And so that's been, and I tape that. So yep. that yeah, can. anyone who isn't there can, can, can see it. And that's probably my, my biggest win. And I really like the, uh, the flip grid. Um, that's been really great for students to, to be able to share with me their understandings instead of in a, you know, the summative tests are great that I build off of KP, but some kids just, they don't learn that way. They'd rather communicate. So, so I've been able to ask questions and, and kids have been able to, to respond to me um, just saying, hey, this is what I did. This is what it looks like. This is, you know, and, and they can express their understanding of a, of a particular uh, aspect of what they're doing. But we're, we're still in the, in the very early stages. I do, everybody's ServeSafe certified, which was fantastic. I had never used your platform for ServeSafe. I had always used um, the ServeSafe, uh, you know, eight hour video, blah, blah, blah. And it, this, this worked. So I was very excited about that. Yeah, we're glad to hear that. Uh, that's about what I got. Yeah, this, our ServeSafe program is definitely the, makes it so much easier. But what I wanted to key in on was so what you, you you talked about is is like you know doing the the restaurant thing. So so are you proposing that you uh, you're going to be doing like a a, a takeout service or a uh, or or a meal prep service? Um, yeah, we can't we can't do in person. Under, we can't even do fifty percent or twenty five percent. So what we've got, I've done, I've used Google Forms so far, and with Google Forms we do uh, you know we make a about 36 baguettes a week. And we have put out a, and you, on Google Forms, you can put, a, you can put a, uh, a limiter. So you put out a form and you say, okay. And, and so there's 61 in our administration and, and everybody loves our, our baguettes. So we put it out and they order them. And then we have them delivered to a particular location. And that person who is at that location has the, has the cash drawer, so to speak. And yeah. um, everybody goes to that point person. So we don't, we used to just go up and deliver and, and there was all sorts of free flow. People were looking for the bread people in the halls and uh -huh. that's one. And then just today um, I had to shut down a, a uh, one of the, the surveys. We called it glass, our, our restaurant's called the Glass Onion and we called it the Glass Onion Specialties. So, you know, we made some cream of tomato cheddar soup. We made some turkey pot pies. We made... Um, we made this, uh, this Persian salad. I have a, a, a kid who's, who's from Iran and he's really into, into sharing his cuisine with us. And we made, uh, anyways, we put them all on the form with a limiter and then people could just go in and fill out the form and it, it sold out at about 11 o'clock this morning. So I just turned it off and therefore people are going to say, well, we missed out next time we're going to get in earlier and, and we're going to, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to, what I, what I call pull the trigger on this thing until I know that what, what, what we're going to offer. I'm not just going to disappoint people because I'm always going to run out of it because we don't make enough of it. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, that's what, that's the model we're sort of going with. Yeah, and, and, and you know, like uh, somebody brought up the idea of like um, take-home meal meal prep kits. So basically, you, you do all the knife cuts and you provide all the ingredients, and then they can make a chicken piccata or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, um, exactly. So, so exactly. you're so you're finding that the, this this is totally supplementing mm -hmm. the loss of funds that you were uh, ex expect you normally see when you have the in dining uh, services, right? Exactly. And I'm fortunate enough to have enough students who have the flexibility to come. You know, I call this my student activity fund. So we do Skills USA. And in order to qualify for um, student activity 
fundraising. It has to be outside the school day, which the school day is defined in our county as 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And so I get in about 7.20 in the morning and I meet one or two students. And we've, we used to do a, a sort of a continental breakfast and, and it was sort of like wait for people to come and pick up and, they, they, and sometimes we'd sell out and sometimes we wouldn't. And now we've developed a, a Google form and a menu and we've grown the menu and students are able to, to find their own rhythm in the morning and, and get, get it set up. We, we make the breakfast and then from 8.15 to 8.45, people actually come down and pick it up at our, at our sort of at our door and we charge them and, and put it away. So that's worked as well. So we're finding it somehow, it's working. Yeah, and, and your, your audience is only your faculty, right? So you didn't even, you're not even open it up to the general public. Well, we are attached at the hip to the Middlebury Union High School. We have three sending schools that, that service our career center. Those, the, the one school which has the biggest population we are attached to. So we have, yeah. you know, there's, there's some trepidation with regard to, the, to the, the administration as to is it safe can you can, can these kids be serving food to our faculty or are we going to get sick and 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 i'm you know the nurse actually knows me well and has said you know we they they they, they have they know how to prepare food in a safe way and that's what they're doing so yeah so that's, that's working great. so they're able to get all that practice in and and you're able to yes uh um, fundraising i guess and and everyone's happy i mean i just want to i want to say that it's we are so fortunate i mean we're all i have shields and masks so you know when i'm when i'm with students in direct i'll, I'll wear my mask and sometimes my shield as well um and, and and it's 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 scary you know but but kids respect us they respect what we're doing and they really want to be there and there, there's, I have had no arguments about social distancing, about mask wearing, about, about washing hands, about being you know, absolutely responsible to keep us there because they know the alternative and that's not what they want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everyone wants to stay in line so that they don't have to go home. <laughs> right good, very good incentive there. Um, you know. And glad everyone's taking it seriously. No, that's great. You know, those those are brilliant ideas for uh, for continuing engagement and also fundraising at the same time. I know a lot of people can't do that now. Um, so any any ways to generate money from what you normally do in your uh, restaurant uh, is a uh, is welcome. <laughs> Well, it's wonderful to hear where where everybody else is because it really it, it it sort of humbles me that I'm as fortunate as I am. I I I, I, I listen to what everybody's doing. I think it's you, you, you. Everybody's working really hard outside of the box to make this work, and I and I and I honor everyone's diligence in this uh, in this time. So, way to go, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thanks for um, you know. And, you know, even your perspective is important because, you know, you know, this is something that we can look forward to and the things that you're doing now um, will, you know, you know, as, as we go come out of lockdown or come out of hybrid, you know, but still can't uh, sell to the public or, you know, do those kind of things to fundraise. You know, these are the ideas that need to, you need to really focus on you know, or longevity, <laughs> so to speak. That's yes. what you all might want to do is look at your uh, athletic teams because, you know, we usually run a full-blown catering company, but the athletic teams, who the boosters usually do like the team meal, like our football team, but there's been, you know, hesitancy about that for parents just bringing in food, you know, from home and, and that kind of stuff. So we just got another request today to do the team meal, which will be a good fundraiser for us. And, you know, it's coming out of our licensed catered kitchen. So you may reach out to some of those groups because they're really struggling. Last week we did a cake for them for the dessert. 
and they had ordered the meal from from a restaurant and it cost them quite a lot yeah. and i mean you know we're still making money but we're going to be able to save them money by doing this meal next week and it's something pretty simple and with tacos you know i can do my knife cuts with the lettuce and the tomatoes and all of that so it works right into my lesson plan right now uh, and so that's another thing you might want to do if you're struggling with fundraising, because then you can keep it right within the school system. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Another brilliant idea. You know, these, uh, sports teams want food. Yeah. And ordering, ta ordering catering is expensive. So you have to look at about 10 to $15 per head <laughs> for what you probably could provide for half that or less than, <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, a lot, a lot of different ways to make money or try to make money for your program is uh, through that. Uh, but I, I, so far, I haven't heard anyone any, uh, do anything for the community anymore, at least yet. So, uh, like selling to the general public, like you used to. I know there's probably a lot of liability for that for the school that doesn't want it to tackle that. Um, <clears throat> great. So, um, if I may ask, Leif, what are you making? <laughs> I'm getting ready to demonstrate after we're done with this how to make. So I'm doing in my advanced classes. I do international cuisine, so I do I do video demonstrations. So I'm doing Germany right now, and I'm going to do schnitzel and a potato and apple mash. Cool. It just looks interesting what you're doing there. So. Yeah, I'm just prepping it all right now. So when I'm, I'm done with this, I'm going to do that. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Thanks for it. I was just, uh, you know, I had a curiosity of all the different things that you were measuring out uh, on the screen there. Uh, so I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's how is. I'm getting. Yeah. yeah, that's how I'm teaching the hands-on component in my classes because we're not allowed to have kids on campus and we're not really allowed to give much stuff to the kids that do at home. So I'm doing, I'm teaching them virtually and then they do like a worksheet and they answer, answer questions and stuff like that through a video, through the video I demonstrate. <laughs> yeah, no, um, that, that's what we all have to do. <laughs> so, so what yeah. you in, uh, were you all virtual? Yeah, we're all virtual right now. Which state are you in? Oh, Calif oh California. I'm in, I'm in North in near Sacramento and Woodland. Okay. So pretty much the uh, same spot where, uh, um, oh, some somebody who was here earlier was from Sacramento as well. <laughs> yeah. um, I, just, I can't think. Of, I just can't think of the name right at this moment. <clears throat> so uh, so great. Uh, yeah, I know that uh, there's the, that's definitely a uh, a growing hot spot there. Uh, at least your fires are taken care of. So that's, uh, yeah, thankfully for that. It's windy today, so the internet was struggling today for the kids. Oh. <laughs> So in your setup, you you have you meet with them um, virtually every every day, or how how often? Yeah, um, I meet with them three days a week on because we're on block days, except for Mondays we meet with all seven classes. Okay. For thirty five minutes to check in with them, and then Tuesday through Friday we have two. Tuesday through Friday, two of the days we have half of our classes. And the other half on the other two days. Okay, <laughs> a lot of work. Um, yeah. Great. So. Uh, yeah. Anybody else have anything to share? Where I think we're coming down to the uh, the end of this meeting. Lots of great ideas that were shared today. You know, um, and and you're really hearing your experiences. Um, you know, def especially with like you know sending food home, uh, doing fundraising ideas. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and Celine is telling us that tomorrow is National Hand Washing Day. You know, blend that into our lessons. <laughs> and okay. Veronica wrote, depending on your school, if the students are virtual and the staff is not, you might be able to invite a guest chef to demonstrate. That's a good idea. Um, so you can also use this as an opportunity to gain mentors uh, for your students to build an advisory committee of the group. So great. thanks for sharing about that idea. Have you gotten anybody yet or? 
Um, we, I just actually, my afternoon meeting was about that. I did have some um, speakers and mentors when I started here about 20 years ago, and then that kind of fell uh, by the wayside. And um, when I was teaching at the middle school um, about 15 years ago, I had a small group of business leaders that came. And because they cut our program by 50%, I think a lot of the community didn't know that and neither did the parents. So I'm thinking if I get uh, more support from our restaurants, I mean, we have a lot of students working in restaurants. So I thought that would be a way to kind of maintain our program. And also I had another idea where someone was talking about fundraising. We had a business here who approached our student organizations and asked them if they would provide meals once a month or once a week for their workers to purchase. Um, and then the company would also guarantee that they would buy a certain number of meals, maybe 15 meals at a certain price. So that way the club would make some money and their workers would have something different to eat. So if you have some manufacturing companies near you that you maybe could partner with um, or uh, other groups, maybe a business that might be willing to buy some meals like one of the gentlemen, I think it was William was talking about on the Google form so you you would know ahead. Although the company here that purchases meals, um, student organizations don't know how many they're going to buy. You just have to do your best guess. So that was just another fundraiser idea. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and I think that uh, also uh, falls in line with uh, um, like, you know, some, some schools were doing like meals for frontline workers. So they would get they would they would give the frontline workers or, or the first responders let's say like you know a firehouse or a, a hospital and they would actually you know give the food for free but they would ask for donations from the community so so then you know, so it's community involvement see dan um well, william um, um they, so then you know what they would do is they would involve the community fundraise that way but then um, it would be free for the for like the hospital workers or something like that so it's a win-win for everybody because uh, then you got community, you got feeding the hospital or firemen or whatever you know um, group is near you, um, and building goodwill too at the same time. So that's great that you have that opportunity, and, and basically we just need to figure out how to expand and grow on that idea. <clears throat> so thanks for sharing that tidbit of uh, idea. Um, so. This has been a good meeting, so I'm going to put on my pirate hat, and actually, no, I'm going to switch to my graduation cap <laughs> and say that, you know, so that we don't have any other uh, pressing uh, needs, uh, you know, I think an hour and 20 minutes is definitely a good um, good meeting. You know, the last one went two hours nonstop. It was full of great questions and sharing as well, but, um, but you know, if anybody has anything else, well, I guess what we'll do is we'll... Uh, hang up our hats uh, and survive for another two weeks and see you at the next meeting, which will be just before Halloween. Um, and I hope that, you know, I just want to make sure people are getting the Zoom invites uh, from the Zoom, from Zoom directly. Uh, I set that up last yep. meeting and I was, yeah, and I just want to make sure that everyone's getting those uh, emails delivered. Um, and I have like over 50 people who are in that uh, bucket. Um, and, uh, uh, and William says, thank you all for doing this to share the strengths and challenges. Good luck. And he has to make dinner. <laughs> yes. Um, so thanks again. And for those of you who are watching uh, um, this video, I'd like to thank you for sticking around. And, and we'll have our next meeting on Wednesday, uh, October 28th. Uh, at the same time and uh, same bat time, same bat channel. So thanks. Hey, again. I got a question yeah. for oh, Leif. Yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead. So Leif, how yeah. much sure, can you share your wonderful demos with the rest of us? Yeah, how do I do that? Well, I mean, so if, if you have it on recorded, like if you have it on YouTube, you could just send me the link and then I can do I'm it. On, I am on a Google Drive. I can try to add, figure out how to add it to YouTube. I'll figure uh, out how to do that. Yeah, you can up upload it to YouTube, which is more more accessible. But you can also share those Google Drive uh, folder or the links, and then uh, and we could just look at all the uh, demonstrations that you've done. So, 
So whichever method, and I, you know, I could help you figure out what the best method is um, with Google Drive. That would be really great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you know, I've demoed, me I've demoed me measuring already, and i in my beginning classes, and then I'm demoing <laughs> with them knife cuts next week. Cool. Yeah, just send it to me, and I'll send yeah. email it to. I'll put it on the resources page, and then email to uh, the whole to, to the whole group. Uh, so just let me know if you need any help uh, with which method you would like to do, and, and I'll be happy to. Um, but the drive yeah. is probably the simplest because all you have to do is probably sh uh, share a folder with your videos, and then and then you just right. keep sharing links to new videos or. Right. Yeah. If, you, okay. if you're working in Drive, it's easiest just to share the folder. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just okay. make, it, make it publicly available. Email demos. Uh, so so sure email it to you and then you'll make it available? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Email to me and I'll make email it Email to you. Yeah. You have my email? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Of course okay. You I'll do that. Yeah. And, uh, and, I'll let you know, and I'll let you know if you need to make any changes to it. Uh, make sure that we have all the right permissions and then uh and then i'll send and i'll send it uh, as the follow-up uh for this meeting uh after i post it on youtube <laughs> yay okay good, good, good thank good. you Lay. okay i'll do that late. you're welcome have a good day you guys all right thanks again you everyone too, thanks, for, thanks for participating and, and you're this, welcome and if you're watching this, you know, this group is only as good as uh, if you participate. So I hope you can participate at future meetings uh, every two weeks and uh, have yourself a fabulous uh, new next two weeks. And uh, we'll see you just before Halloween. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Bye. Bye.